previously on Coruscant Nights. Eh, sir. It's the Blood Wolves again. How long have they been bothering you? And Uncle says, They have been coming by for about two months now. And you didn't call us before? No, they threatened me. But uh, something even worse has happened now. Oh, what's that? Well, Cantina's commissaries and cafes is gonna come here tomorrow, and we're all out of Nexu fish. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not worry about the state of the restaurant. We're just out of fish. <laughs> That's a, what a twist. <laughs> There are many good choices along the path. Some lead to an easy route, others to a hard way. But you know what they say, all good things come to. I'm afraid I don't know you, sir. And this is between my livelihood and the word of somebody that I don't know. Very well, we are no longer comrades. If you want to play that game, what would you be willing to... Uh, I... Let, let's get to the point. I need the fish. I need a fish for tomorrow. What would you be willing to wager for me to uh, against me getting that fish? Because I did a lot of things that I'm not proud of during the Clone Wars. What, what are we, we gambling for this fish now? I would gamble with my life for this fish. <laughs> <laughs> Is it really worth, really worth that much to you? It's worth the world. It's worth the universe. I'm not going to fight you for it if that's what you're thinking. Well, I mean, it, 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 do you have a challenge? Do you like to gamble? I, I don't know. I, what would you want from me? Uh, I have services that I can offer aside from, you know, cooking. I, I am a chef. What do you want to do with those three um, advantages? With those three advantages, he has some sort of a challenge for me. <laughs> He's going to take this bet. I am not walking out of here. I am not walking out of here without that damn fish. <laughs> oh, man. Let me think for one second. <laughs> wow. Whoo, what a twist. Meanwhile, outside. <laughs> <laughs> what is what is Coraline doing? I think I probably found some kind of vantage point where I could, you know, just watch people coming in and going just in the event that uh, Stanos isn't able to get one. Maybe, well, no, they usually don't sell raw fish. So I guess I can't, like, jump anyone for their fish. <laughs> uh, but maybe I'm keeping an eye on the back then in case they get, you know, more deliveries or maybe they decide to, like, throw something out. Okay, can I get a Vigilance check? It'll be against two purples, but a black because it's dark out. Okay, so you don't see anything odd. You're, you're just sort of watching the door, watching the back door, making sh just to see if there's any deliveries or anything like that. And somewhere close by, you hear the sound of uh, a group of swoop bike en engines, but you can't quite pinpoint where they are. The... Let's say the, um, the the swoops that you've been riding have a particular sound to them, and these engines probably also come from the same gang as the people that you took your bikes from. And I'm going to go ahead and flip a dark side point. Oh, um, no. Because uh, somewhere below you, you hear the the sounds of those engines getting a little bit closer, and then you hear some voices. It's a, it's a couple of our bikes. Do you know who's who's around here right now i have no idea i, I haven't seen anybody ar around dak avenue in a while i thought it was just us it sounds like there are a couple couple people from this gang checking out the the bikes that you took oh i might have an idea what's that i think i'm gonna peek over and talk to them okay are, are you friends with the people that rode it on these bikes and you so see you peek over and you see a pair of deveronians in leather jackets yeah we're blood wolves. These bikers are blood wolves. Have you seen them? I saw them getting into a bit of a scuffle with the bouncers for the back gate. It was three on two and they ended up dragging your friends inside. What? 
They can't do that. Let's get a deception check. Where's my deception at? Oh boy, I know where this is going. <laughs> uh, can I flip a light side point for this? Sure can. It's going to be against uh, one purple. You flip that light side first. And light side gives me another green Ooh, or a see. boost. Um, we're doing deception. It's going to change one of your greens to a yellow. Okay, cool. So and it's yellow and green one against purple? one purple. Yeah, one success. Okay. They believe you. What are you talking about? They're messing with the Pontus people? I'm not sure if it was against the Pontus people or the bouncer in particular. They seemed like they maybe knew each other, but you know, the other bouncer is back the one guy up. Oh, man. The one turns the other. Jocko is not going to be happy about this. What do we do? I don't know. What do you think we should do? You hear bad things about the huts all the time. I know it's maybe not your style to mess with Pana, but you should probably get your friends out. They seemed like they had really serious beef with those bouncers. I was on my way out of here making a delivery, but I ducked in here after the scuttle went on. You know, it's bad to be in the wrong place at the wrong time down here. Sure is. I guess we should go check it out. You want to come with us? Sure. I'll document it on my data pad just in case anything goes wrong. I'll back you up. Cool. Good idea. We grunts have to stick together. Yeah, we do. Let's go. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> It's so cut. It's so, so scene like shifts over to to me, like still arguing with the clone. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, you got your three advantages. There. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just sitting there, like, please, you, you've got to have a, some sort of a challenge. You know how honor works. It is in our blood to be honorable, to have some sort of honor contest for these fish. But well, I must leave here with a fish if you have it. Please, there is, comrade. There is something you could do for me. No, oh, what's that? This, uh, this fella, Jocko, is a Deveronian. He's been, uh, really messing with my neighborhood. In particular, my neighbor. Oh, who is this Jocko? Is he leader of some gang? Not as far as I know. I think he just lives in the neighborhood. He's really been messing with, with my neighbor, Dania. I've got a bit of a crush on but don't tell her that. You know, if you could take take care of him, I could probably sneak you into the kitchen. Friend, you're truly a comrade. It's a deal. It is. And then he st- he shakes it like like he puts out his like giant palms like for a, mm-hmm. for a shake. Yeah. And you two are both like giant warrior dudes. Mm-hmm. You do the whole arm clasp shake. Yeah. All right, he's a comrade. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes consider this Jocko a thing of the past also just so that you know chicks kind of dig this car <laughs> oh you, you think so oh yes yes people chicks love persons that come out of uh, combat don't worry I think you got this just be smooth <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile behind Panas. Coraline and a pair of Deveronians walk up to the back door. There is uh, an Aquilish person back there and a and a Gungan, and they're both wearing nice suits standing behind the back door, yeah. by the back door. <clears throat> and uh, the Gungan says, Can I help you? What did you do with the blood wolves? I saw you take them inside. The, the Aquilish says, <laughs> How many people can I target at, at once with the, uh, the the illusion that makes them see something that's not really there? Great question. I think one. Just one? Okay. Range. You've got range and two controls, so yeah. You could also just make yourself disappear. And I was going to try to trick them into like seeing maybe a, a, a patch on the ground from the scuffle, but if it only works on one of them. Is the door completely closed, or is it like a I little mean, bit ajar? They're also idiots, so <laughs> you only probably have to convince one of them. That's fair. You know what? I'll make him think. Yeah, I'll make him think that like one of the bouncers has his friend's like patch in his pocket. Okay. Uh, let me roll force for that real quick. He's loving that dark side. You want to use it? Yeah. Okay. So the one Deveronian says, Hey, is that one of our patches? This Deveronian is slowly becoming more and more surfer. I'm here for it. I think that's a, that's a blood wolf's patch in that guy's pocket. Hey, 
you Gungan guy, did you did you steal one of our patches and just like take our guys and put them in inside your back room? And the Gungan says, I don't know what you're talking about. And the Aquilish says, <laughs> and I think the Deveronians rush these two guys. Let's roll to see what happens. Yes. More blood for the blood god. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is gonna get good. Uh, I'm also keeping my <laughs> arms folded uh, as so as to cover the the little Cabana logo. <laughs> okay, so the the two Deveronians rush the Gungan and the Aqualish, and after a short brawl with lots of punching, lots of grunting, the Gungan and the Aqualish sit propped and passed out against the wall to this place. And the two Deveronians, uh, one of them opens the door to the back of Pana's. Is this visible from the front of the restaurant? It's not. Oh. <laughs> no, I mean, like, like them opening the door. Like, could, do you yeah, have a no. quick... No? Oh. It's around a corner. There's plants in the way. A big fish tank. Oh. Usual uh, fancy restaurant props that are useful in a fight. Okay, yeah. Um, so in the front, the clone is telling Stano... Yeah, I'll just live a couple blocks down. Uh, if if you if you want to go take care of take care of uh, Jocko for me and just come back here, yeah, I think I could let you in the kitchen for for just a minute. Very well, comrade. I will do as you ask, for honor's sake, and for the fish. <laughs> and he gives you the address that he thinks is Jocko. All right. <laughs> Let's go to Jacko's. There's a screen wipe, and we see Stano standing in front of this apartment building. Yeah. Looking up into a window where we see the silhouette of uh, somebody with large horns. Oh, very good. So I ring the buzzer. <laughs> and it's one of those uh, apartments where they it, it's got the intercom. So you hear yeah. What? Special delivery for a Jocko. I didn't order anything. Uh, it's a prime package. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Do we want to hold this? I don't know. Like, does it, it, does it, what kind of a, an apartment building is it? Like, like is uh, it like a rundown place? Yeah, I mean, it's not super rundown, but it, it's you can see the sky. So mm -hmm. it's kind of fancy enough um okay. i'm just gonna i'd say it's worth a dark side flip for him to say oh it, it's really late but yeah you can, i'm gonna buzz you in very well thank you friend and you make your way up the lift yeah. to the place where this guy is supposed to live all right cool yeah uh so uh like does he have the front door open or do i have to knock uh, probably have to knock yeah okay cool so before i walk in before like as he buzzes me in i i look for the uh the nameplate that says Jocko. Mm -hmm. Yep, you spot it. <laughs> All right, cool. So now I know where I'm going. <laughs> I don't want, I, like, I don't want there to be any sort of like, like plot holes. Like, how did he find his, like, like you know how people are in the area. Like, how did he find his apartment without ringing all the buzzers? <laughs> no, it, it clearly states Jocko yep, on the nameplate. <laughs> you head up to Jocko's apartment. Mm -hmm. I knock on the door. Um. It takes a second. You see the shadow of somebody through the uh, mm -hmm. the peephole, and he opens it up just a crack. You see yeah. a Deveronian who is uh, almost as tall as you. Uh, the horns are quite large. He's got sort of a bronzy colored skin yeah. and mutton chops. Okay, so uh, is there like a uh, what kind? Of, so like, is it one of those chain locks that go from like the door to? Uh... Oh, definitely, yeah. Oh, yeah. So as soon as he opens that door, I kick it right. For, <laughs> I kick it right there. <laughs> Meanwhile, at Pana's, <laughs> the two Deveronians have knocked down the the back door, and you stand with them in this back hallway. To the left, there is a freezer. To the right, you see the open door to the kitchen where people are still cooking, even though it's so late at night. There's like big flames going up here and there and big pots of steaming things. And um, it's very noisy back here and you don't see anybody else who works here besides the people in the kitchen. I'm going to check the freezers. You two should quietly question the kitchen staff. 
I, th I think if they're going to stash them somewhere, they're probably in the freezer. It just seems like the thing that a hut would do. The huts are crafty. The freezer is the first place you would look. Uh, okay. okay. We'll go check with the kitchen. And they turn into the kitchen and start bothering somebody who, who's in there. You head into the freezer? Yeah. You open the door to the freezer. I also still and... have my I still have my fish in a bag. Maybe I can steal a better container. Sure. Yeah. You head into the freezer, and as you open the door, you see somebody sitting in there on a chair, tied up, and they've got a gag in their mouth. And as you walk in, they go, <laughs> "I'll remove the gag," but like as I remove it, put the finger up, like you know, oh, you be quiet. You gotta help me. This person is a godal. They have like fur all over their body. They've got some like little cone horn things on the top of their their head. You gotta help me. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, this okay. guy tied me up. You gotta let me out. I'm, I I'm him a bunch of money. <laughs> I'm going to let you go and let you know that the way out is through the kitchen. Okay. Thank you. You head around to the back of him and untie him. After I let him go, I would like to cast illusion on him to make him look like one of the blood wolves. Great. Roll it. All these dark side points. <laughs> well, you're, uh, you're, you're doing you bad stay stuff. On brand. I, what? I'm letting people go. <laughs> letting him go and disguising him as somebody that's probably going to get punched in the face. <laughs> I mean, I'm not doing the punching. It's true. Uh, he, he turns back as he opens the door to the freezer and says, Thank you. And runs out through the kitchen. You have the freezer to yourself. I would like to commandeer a better cooler. There sure can be a better cooler. It doesn't have to be huge. Just something, you know, that what does it can look like? fit more than one fish comfortably. You know what? I think it's like your your classic, like, blue cooler that's got the little handle on it. Okay. And, and then I you start proceed to try and find the next you fish. Great. Meanwhile, a couple blocks away. Yes. Sano kicks down the door. Mm -hmm. And there are four giant people in this apartment right now. And then Stano just like puffs up his chest and raises up his like his neck in the standoffish position. He goes, I hear you like to pick on defenseless people. What are they wearing? They are probably wearing like tank tops and jeans. They're like a greaser gang almost. Oh, God. <laughs> oh no yeah so one of them's got a, his like tank top and jeans another one's got his uh his t-shirt um with the sleeves rolled up a little bit they all look like they're definitely part of the blood wolves ah blood wolves that is very fortunate for me and very unfortunate for you. This is also the point where we get to point out to Duane that it's all light side points. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, Duane. We survived. <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> for now. Yeah. <laughs> what does Stano do? Stano, his, is there like a, like a, like a small table? Like um, around? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so they were all, three of them were sitting on this, like, low couch around a table that is just covered in stacks of cash. Oh, wonderful. So the first thing he does, uh, I'm just going to say, if I could paint the room just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, as soon as, so I kick open the door, Jocko goes, like, like kind of falters back a little bit. Allowing just a me little. To, yeah, just a yeah. little. Uh, allowing me to get into the door frame. On to my right, I'm hoping that there is like some sort of like a leather couch of some sort and then sure. like, a, like a small coffee table to the left of it, kind okay. of like next to the frame of the door. Uh, if that if that is there, uh, the first thing he's going to do is take his leg, uh, kick the table up in the air and then kick it at like one of the goons in the back. <laughs> Great. Let's do it. All right. Uh, I'll accept a melee for that. All right. Uh, let's see. Melee is You're pretty good two at two yellows and a green. <laughs> two purples. Oh yeah, it's one success and one advantage. Okay, noise. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so he he like hacky sacks the table, right? Like he kicks yep. it up in the air, and then roundhouse kicks it like directly in the face of one of the goons in the back. 
Okay. And Jocko <laughs> sort of recovers a little bit and is going to try to get you. All right. You could try. He's going to try. <laughs> Any idea for that advantage? Uh, for the advantage, I'm going to say that there is a fake tree. Like like one of those like a display trees that you put in front of your house. Uh-huh. It's kind of like like heavy plastic almost. Yeah. We're going to make it plasteel. Sure. <laughs> but it's colored like a, like a tree. Okay. That's and his next it, that's within yeah, that's that's within reach. Okay. Ooh. Okay. And Stano rushes you and you get a shoulder to the gut. Oh, you're actually going to it's going to get through your soak. You're going to take one after your soak. Oh, what is a uh, yeah, so he that. rushes you <laughs> and hits you with his shoulder, yeah. like right in the like the low part of your chest, and pushes you against a wall yeah. and knocks the breath out of you a little bit. Oh no, I'm down to sixteen wounds. Whatever will I do? <laughs> <laughs> he got past my melee defense one. Yeah, he did. <laughs> All right, cool. Good for you, Jocko. <laughs> Good for you. Jocko knows what he's doing. Yeah. So are we just going back and yeah, forth? Yeah, we're just going then? back and forth. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. The next thing that uh, that Stana will do is he grabs the plasteel display tree. with and Let's say it has uh-huh. a clay vase at the bottom. He swings it sure. and, hits Jocko and tries to hit Jocko in the head. Great. So that is a melee again. Mm-hmm. And since we are, like, right in with each other's range, um, wouldn't that be one difficulty to hit? Uh, like, melee since we're, is like, always in... two. Oh, melee is always two. Okay, cool. Yep, but I'm going to call that a medium-sized improvised weapon. So it'll do a little mm-hmm. extra damage if you, if you hit. Here we go. Ooh, Four successes nice. and a threat! Nice. <laughs> so, yeah, so he, like, he grabs the tree with one hand and then, like, flips it upside down, kind of does uh, this whole, like, twirl with it, and then smacks Jocko right on the head. He <laughs> knocks him out. And cold. knocks him out. In the threat, I'm just gonna take, I'm just gonna say he over, like, like, I'm just gonna take a strain for the threat, if that's okay. Sure, that, that works for me. All right. Yeah, he, he sort of overswung, sort of strained his shoulder a little bit. Mm-hmm. And the three other people stand up quickly from the couch and start running towards you. Okay, cool. Meanwhile at Pana's... Let them come. <laughs> Coraline is in the freezer, searching through all sorts of bins and boxes and everything for a Nexu fish. You want to tell me some of the stuff you find in here? I'm also open to like any other kind of expensive fish. Okay. So I'm thinking I find some kind of maybe rare squid. And this is also where they, you know, keep people and things they find. So I'm sure I also find some fun stuff. Sure. Yeah. You find a little box that has a bunch of credits and a finger. I'll take it. (laughs) Take that one for later. Yeah. It's green. It has a big ring on it. It's got a, a little sucker at the end. It's probably a rodian. I'll take it. I'll put it in the bottom so the fish cover it up. What else do you find in here? So you've got a you got a, a great squid, a finger, some credits. I find like a baseball card that's signed, but I don't know anything about baseball. But I pocket it sure, anyway. You, yeah, it's a sport that not many people have heard of. Just anything that's uh, that stands out or is maybe unexpected. Coraline's a bit of a club though. She looks through things. She finds some rare fish. She finds a lot of regular fish and meat and vegetables and and stuff. And then she finds a little box with a couple Nexu fish in it. How many Nexu fish? Do you want to tell me what a Nexu fish looks like since there is not a picture of them on Wikipedia? Yeah, I think we talked about them being uh, almost like the puffer fish, uh, but I think... So Nexu are like Star Wars tigers. So it's almost like, like a tiger fish. Oh, okay. Tigers. I, I feel like it should be the the love child of the catfish and the puffer fish. Sure. So it's got some like spiky spine whiskers on the front of it. Yeah, it looks like just a, a chunky sea tiger. Cool. Uh, yeah, you find a little case with three of them. I mean, it, it's tough to pass up this opportunity. I'm already pretty deep. I think I'm just going to take all of them. Yeah, you can fit the whole. They're They're not huge, so you can fit them in your cooler. And if you are satisfied with your find, you might leave the freezer and see what's happening in the kitchen. So uh, could I flip a light side point to, to retroactively say 
that I had managed to take uh, one of the patches from the jackets we hung outside of uh, Little Cabana. Yeah, sure. So I think I'm going to take it out of my pocket and just drop it in the cooler, in the freezer. Drop it in the freezer? Like exactly where you found something valuable? Yeah. Great. I'm glad we're starting a turf war in in this set I of episodes. I start turf wars. It's, a, it's, it's like a compulsion. <laughs> I can't control it. It's great. And I'll go check on All what right. the kitchen yep. staff are up to. You want to tell me what the kitchen looks like right now? Uh, has the one has the guy disguised as a, a blood wolf run through yet? Oh, I think he's like already been knocked out and he's half in and half out of the kitchen. Well, he was disguised to look like one of them. So I wonder if they just like yeah. accosted him thinking it was their buddy and like tried to like drag him out. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's great. OK, so, yeah, maybe they're outside now. Are they just like trying to get their store? I, yeah, I mean, well, I got to go past them to get out. So I guess I'll, I'll make my yeah. way out and just be like, ah, I see you found your friend. And the person that you know is, even though they look like one of these Deveronians, they're a Godel, says, I don't know these people at all. And the one of the two dummies is like, yeah, I mean, we've been through like everything together, Fungi. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Let's get, just get back down to the lower <laughs> levels. I don't know who you are. Please let me go. You probably take him home. He must have received a pretty heavy blow to the head. Come on, Fungi. We're going to get you back on one of those bikes and you'll be okay in the morning. No, no. <laughs> and they drag him off. <laughs> Oh, I'm dying here, the poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna wait until they leave and then just like hook up the cooler to the the back of the remaining speeder. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Oh. Meanwhile, in Jocko's apartment. Yeah. I think at this point you've knocked out at least one other person. What happened? <laughs> or so, not even what happened. Where are they and what do they look like right now? So after he he whacked Jocko with the with with the um the display tree, uh, uh -huh. he grabbed another guy and basically like um opened up the fridge, just slammed the fridge <laughs> on his head, um and then like another guy comes after him and uh, he runs at him while he's in the kitchen and um Stano just like kicks over like a pot that's kind of that's kind of like hanging like mm -hmm. straight into the guy's face yeah yeah and just knocks him out cold okay um <laughs> and then the last guy's gonna come for you yeah and then um he, he then uh he comes for uh, like he comes charging the same way the other guy did and stano just hops over him and then uh, just kicks it like like roundhouse or basically like kind of like uh, extends his leg backwards to kick him into the wall. Mm -hmm. And then as he's reeling yeah. from the wall, right. what if you like kick the table into him? Oh yeah, that's like it. the kitchen table. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah. So like so he hops over the rushing blood wolf mm -hmm. and leaps over the table, kicks the table into uh, the Blood Wolf, who is now confused as to where his target oh. went. Uh, uh -huh. he now bent over, like over the table, like, yeah. like like it just hit his stomach and knocked the wind out of him. Stano then grabs him by the jacket and then mm -hmm. kicks him head first into the, tra into the trash can. <laughs> <laughs> yep, great. And then like he, he takes his hands, he kind of like is done and walks over to Jocko, uh, Jacko and uh, yeah holds him up by the jacket, kind of slaps him awake. He's he's groggy. He oh, 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 yeah. oh, oh. Listen here, Jacko. If I ever get word that you that you mess with the defenseless ever again, so help me force. Not only will you get knocked out, but you will disappear. I want another <laughs> coercion check. Just to, just to see. <laughs> Don't forget your advantage. Yeah, yeah, I've got an advantage. Uh, three greens. You know what? We got light sides. I'm gonna flip a light side uh, in order to up, uh, upgrade one of those dice to a yellow. Yeah, um, I'm gonna do the so same for red. It's gonna be against to a red and a purple. Okay, that's one excess, uh, success yeah. and four advantages with my coercion check. Yep, four advantages. Yep, okay. great. He is not really coherent, and he just kind of like nods his head and and. Uh, he he nods his head three times and on the fourth time it just it just slumps forward. Cool. And then uh, Stano runs over to uh, I guess the kitchen table's now kind of like 
flipped over at this point. He grabs a few yeah. bucks for his time. He he grabs like a, a like a nice wad of cash for his time. And Great. then um, is that your advantages <clears throat> that you're going to get out of there with a big wad of cash? Sure, why not? Did the clone ever disclose to me where his uh, love interest actually like lives? No, just that they live close by. Yeah, they live close by. Okay, cool. Yeah. So he gave you their name though. Cool. Uh, it, I assume that she's not in the same building, right? She might be. <laughs> Let's check. <laughs> <laughs> So we get this. Right, you know what? Uh, no, no, no. You know what? Uh, forget that. Uh, he's actually going to walk over back to the restaurant. Okay. So Stano walks a couple of blocks back to the restaurant, mm-hmm. uh, sees Coraline down the alley um, as yeah. these uh, other blood wolves are moving in the opposite direction. Uh, as soon as I see yeah. Stano, I'm going to wave him over. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So he walks over to Coraline and says, ah. What a very productive night. It turns out that I crashed a den of blood wolves. They're not feeling very well right now. Good work. I have also just framed the blood wolves for stealing several criminally inclined items of paraphernalia. Ah, sister, you are so devious. Now it is time for me to get, get, get the fish. And he walks off back to the restaurant. <laughs> I'll, try to, I'll try to grab him before he leaves. <laughs> no, brother, I already stops. have the fish. Oh, you already have the fish? Oh, very well. If you already have the fish, I have some unfinished business to take care of. Hold on one moment. He walks through the front door of the restaurant. Mm-hmm. So what's the scene like right now? The <laughs> front room of the restaurant is yeah. like nothing ever happened. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, the... The two people by, by the side of the door let you through because you've been through. Mm-hmm. Um, so you pass by the Trandoshan and the Umbaran, and the clone behind the desk says, "Did did you get it done?" Oh, Jackal won't be a problem for you or your interest ever again. Uh, I appreciate it. You, it, you said it, you were looking for Nexu fish. Uh, yes, yes, uh, but you know what? I had my fun for the night. I think we'll just call this even. Oh, by oh. the way, he takes out like uh, how many credits was uh, was um, Stano a- a- able to grab? At least a couple thousand. <clears throat> okay, so what? How much would a nice, a very nice like outing cost? Uh, I I think credits are analogous to dollars. Okay, cool. So like he like, hands him he hands him like five hundred credits, and he goes look. You take you take your interest out for a nice for a nice time on the town. This is for a comrade. And he gives it he, he puts out his uh his hand for like a like a bro shake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The yeah. the clone looks down at the at the credits uh, a little confused at first and then looks back up at you and and gives you the the warrior handshake. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then he goes, You have a great night. And he, Thank uh, you, my he walks out. You're, you're most certainly welcome. Uh, by the way, if you ever want to stop by for uh, for a good meal, c- come on over to the uh, the little cabana. You know where that's at. It's in the area, not too far. But I, I, I'll make you something nice. <laughs> and you head out of Bonas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the two of you head back down to the little cabana. Yeah. Where Ankel is cleaning up. He's still cleaning up all the mess of the incident earlier in the night. Yeah, is uh, is Ankel like a, like an older individual? He's yeah, he's probably in his late sixties, early seventies. Yeah, cool. He goes, no, Ankel, you don't you don't do the cleaning. Let me do the cleaning. And he grabs the broom from him and starts sweeping up. Oh, and, th- uh, thank you, Stano. I appreciate it. Oh, it's not a problem. You're like family to me. Like, like an Ankel. Yeah, like Ankel. <laughs> you were like an uncle to me, Ankel. <laughs> were you two able to find the Nexu fish? Oh, uh, sister, I think you have something for him. Yes. It took a bit of scouring, but we managed to procure several Nexu fish. Can we say that the you you pull the case that these things are in out of your your cooler and you open it up 
facing Ankel, and it's rigged so that when you o- open it up, it glows. Oh yeah. So we see the the glow from inside this case on Ankel's face. <laughs> like a treasure chest. <laughs> like a treasure chest. And he oh says, my God. I can't believe you found it so late at night. I have expected everywhere to be closed. I let's just say that uh, we're very resourceful, the uh, very, and I got to get my hands a little dirty, just like the old days. Oh, by the way, those blood f- wolves, folks. Oh, don't tell uh, me about any of that. I don't want to know about that. Oh, Uncle, I just want to let you know that they will never be a problem for you ever again. Oh, thank you, Stano. I sure hope you're right. Oh, and if they do become a problem, well, uh, me and my sister know how to handle those situations. <laughs> As he, like, sweeps the floor. <laughs> Early the next morning, the camera crew for cantinas, commissaries, and cafes comes and, and sets up. Ankel starts to prepare the Nexu fish for Fry's arrival. A, a large crowd gathers outside outside the, the restaurant ahead of the filming and shortly Fry Kieria arrives. He is an Ardinian. He's, you know, that, that monkey guy in Solo with the four arms? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's one of those guys. <laughs> Except instead of blue fur, his fur is kind of like this bleached white and he's got it sort of sticking up all over the place. Does he have the Tommy Bahama shirt? Oh yeah, with four sleeves. Mm-hmm. Ankel prepares his his fish and uh, he, he like serves it on this like beautifully plated bed of of rice probably. Yeah. The the cameras start rolling and he says, "Hi, I'm uh, Fry Kitty. Welcome to another episode of Cantinas, Commissaries and Cafes. Today, I'm at Little Cabana in Lower Gunga Town." It's a nice little restaurant, and uh, I hear they've cooked up something special for us today. I had this thing that I wanted to do that I completely forgot, which was to suggest that Stano was like a fanboy. <laughs> uh, he said, "Let's just say he serves the dish." Okay. Yeah, like uh, he played sous chef, and uh, he serves the, like he he's basically doing the whole motions of serving the dish while yeah. uh, while Uncle is just kind of standing there with it, like his arms crossed. Yeah, it's yeah. all very awkward. Yeah. You're both just like standing next to him while he eats. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And he says, wow, Nexu fish, it's hard to prepare. I uh, I hear you can die if you don't don't prepare it right. I hope you did a good job, old man. <laughs> <laughs> so like Stano kind of looks over to, at the old man, which, like you better, it, like with this look like, I hope to God you're not going to kill my idol. <laughs> 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 and Fry Kiri digs in. Thanks for listening to another episode of Coruscant Nights. Coruscant Nights is a production of Nightcast Creative. For more information on this and our other projects, visit nightcastcreative.com. Thanks to Velvet and Joe for playing on these episodes. You can find Velvet on Twitter at OG Brown Sugar, and Joe is at Joe Chasm. That's J O E K H A S M. And you can find both of them on the Flight Risk Podcast, with new episodes every Friday, wherever you get your podcasts. If you're loving Coruscant Nights, be sure to leave us a review on your favorite podcatcher and visit us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Coruscant Nights. Hey, Nightcrawlers. One week in and our 100th episode trivia contest is going strong. Today's question is, what company is using unscrupulous means to buy up properties in Little Onderon? Think you know the answer? You could win cool Star Wars and RPG stuff over on our Discord. Every right answer is one entry into the contest. Check our show notes and follow the Discord link to play along and score big. 